We all know that one cyber security professional who breaks all the rules, never worked at a big company, no prestigious job titles, yet somehow makes more money, get better opportunities, and has more influence than people with seemingly better credentials. Now, here's the question. What do they know that most professionals don't? You've probably seen it and you wondered how they do it. Today, I'm going to share exactly what's going on with you. See, the most successful cybersecurity professionals are not following the usual career path. They're not just choosing between big companies or small companies. They are playing a completely different game. And you're about to learn how to be a top player too, okay? Now, if you get any value by the time you finish watching this video, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more insightful takes like this one. You know what's crazy about cybersecurity careers? The people who advance fastest are not always the most technical experts. I've watched this pattern play out over and over again. Look, there are these five Swiss sports, five of them, in cybersecurity where different knowledge areas collide. And if you can position yourself at this intersection point, you become 10 times more valuable than someone with better technical skills, but who stays in their lane. Now, spot number one is translating tech into business talk. Okay. Have you ever seen a security expert try to explain a tech problem only to have everyone look confused? Like what, what is he talking about? Right? It happens all the time. Right? Now, imagine what happens when that expert tries to explain it to a group of business leaders who need to make decisions. The whole room just sits there, not understanding why this matters. Now, the secret to success here isn't just talking about tech. It's about turning those tech problems into language that makes sense to the business side. For example, instead of saying something like, we have unpatched vulnerabilities, this is how to say it. If we don't fix these problems, there's a 70% chance we'll be breached, which could cost us $2 million in the next year. You see, people who are really good at this, they don't just know the tech, they know how to speak in a way that gets others to take action because they understand the business side of things too. Okay? Spot number two to position yourself is making security policies actually work. You know how sometimes security policies just sound great in a meeting, but when it's time to put them into action, everything falls apart. That's because what works on paper doesn't always work in the real world. The real heroes in this area don't just write policies. They find a way to make sure those policies actually work without causing problems for the rest of the business. They are the ones who figure out you know, how to make those policies fit into the company's existing processes. For example, let's say you are a compliance analyst, right? Your job is to take security rules and figure out how to make them fit into your company's daily work. Now, instead of just saying we need better access control, this is what I would say. Here is how we can limit who get access to sensitive data without slowing down the workflow. You see that? Cool. Next on the list is spot number three, which is all about turning threat intelligence into action. A lot of businesses spend money on fancy threat intelligence reports that end up being useless. They get all this information about potential threat, but nothing actually changes in how they protect their systems. Like nothing at all. The people who do well in this area, they know how to turn that information into real action. They look at threat data and then they figure out what's most important and then they work with the security team to put new protections in place so they can defend against those threats. For example, right, let's take a look at this. A threat intelligence coordinator doesn't just look at all the data. They figure out what's most relevant to their company and then help the team update their security controls so that they can defend against real threats. That's how it works. 
you know, I get a lot of messages from people asking how they can break into cybersecurity. It's tough, especially if you're like how I used to be, stuck in a job that doesn't pay enough or feeling like you've hit a wall. I get it. That is why I created something more than just these videos you're watching. Something structured, practical, and focused on real action. It's called the five day cybersecurity job challenge. This isn't just content you'll binge and forget. We're talking hands on learning, real skills, and daily guidance. Two hours a day for five days. It's all designed to push you from thinking about change to actually making it happen. Look, I love making these YouTube videos, but let's be honest. How many times have you watched a great video, thought, I'm going to do something about that, and then didn't? That is why this challenge is different. It's designed to be your support, okay? We're not just learning, you're giving tasks, actionable steps every single day with live Q and A's where I personally help you avoid mistakes and learn the jobs that will change your life. Watching my videos is great, but if you want to go beyond watching, if you're ready to take real steps toward a $250,000 career a year, come join the challenge. The link is in the description below. You can't miss it. Now, enjoy the rest of this video, but don't forget to come back when you're ready to take that next step. Now, spot number four is getting developers to actually fix security issues. Now, let me ask you this. How many times have you found security vulnerabilities that never get fixed? It's not that developers don't care about security. They just don't always know how to make security changes that fit into their daily work. For that, here is where you can really stand out. Instead of just pointing out vulnerabilities, you can help developers by making security fixes easy to apply to their work. This way, security isn't seen as a blocker, but as something that fits smoothly into their development process. If you're an application security analyst, you could create a simple developer-friendly instructions on how to fix vulnerabilities. For example, instead of just saying, fix this bug, you would show the developer how to patch it in their code without interrupting their workflow, okay? And finally, on spot number five, to position yourself, is scaling security as companies grow. So, as companies get bigger, their security needs change, right? What worked for a company of 200 people doesn't always work for a company of 2,000. And it definitely doesn't work for 20,000, right? Cool. The trick is to adjust security practices as the company grows without losing effectiveness, okay? Now, if you're a security program coordinator, your job is to track the company's security processes and then figure out when they need to change. Maybe manual processes need to become automated or maybe informal practices need to become official policies. Your job here is to help the company scale security without breaking everything. Now, the next important question to answer here is, how do you position yourself at this sweet spot? Let's go through that. First, you want to figure out where your current expertise connect with other security areas. These connection points, they are your potential high value positions, okay? Then start mapping out where things break down between teams, okay? Where do handoffs fail? Where does information get lost in translation? These friction points, they are gold mines of opportunity, okay? Now comes the important part start developing specific method for fixing these connection problems not just solving them case by case but creating repeatable approaches that bridge these gaps okay and finally begin shifting your career focus toward this intersection point you want to volunteer for cross-functional projects create tools that bridge different domains and then build evidence of the value you create at these interfaces if I were you, I would give myself 12 to 18 months of deliberate focus on this repositioning, okay? Because that's a realistic timeline to transform your value in the security ecosystem. So the pattern is crystal clear. The security professionals who create extraordinary impact are not just technical experts, managers, or leaders. They are connection specialists 
who position themselves precisely where knowledge domains intersect, all right, and then friction creates opportunity. The fact remains, your career success in cybersecurity isn't determined by the company you work for or just your technical depth. No, it's about where you position yourself in the cybersecurity value chain, right at the intersection of knowledge domains where friction creates opportunity. Okay, and there's, there's something I want you to think about. Now think about this. Where do you see the biggest disconnect in your own work? Okay. What area do you think you can start bridging today to create more value? I want you to drop a comment below and share your thoughts. I want to hear how you're planning to create impact in these critical areas. And if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss more insider tips like the one I just shared here. There's a lot more to come and I'm excited to help you level up your cybersecurity career. Okay, let's get to work on this and I will see you in the next video. And in my usual manner, I hope I've been able to leave you today better than I met you. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.